Welcome everyone to the Better Love Movement podcast, where you will finally learn how to intentionally do dating and relationships right. My name is Anita Staudmeyer, and I am a licensed professional therapist and your personal love mentor. I've worked with thousands of singles and couples, giving them the skills needed to attract and keep the amazing love they desire. It is my heart's work to help people to get the skills needed to not only become the very best versions of themselves, but to help them grow and evolve emotionally and relationally. You can absolutely have the romantic relationship of your dreams. Come and let me show you how. Hello and welcome to the Better Love Movement podcast. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of the podcast. I must start this week by apologizing to you all. I have been out for about two weeks. Um, It's been pretty busy here at my home and at work, uh, in my practice. And unfortunately, if anything has to take a hit, it's usually the podcast because that's a little lower on my priority scale. Um, But I am back this week and I missed you all. I missed giving you the skills and the tools and the encouragement that you need out here, especially now. Oh my gosh. I had a a situation last week where I felt a little discouraged myself. I felt a little discouraged with everything that's going on in the world and with dating and relationships and love, but I'm back. I'm back and I've encouraged myself and I'm back to encourage you. We are in episode 157 this week. It is entitled, A Woman Always Has the Power to Choose the Man She is With. And before I jump into this week's episode, I have a sponsor for this week. So I had the opportunity to be a part of a Dating and Relationship Summit. And I am one of, I believe, 25 speakers, yes, in this summit. But let me tell you a little bit about it. And you will be able to grab your spot to hear 25 dating and relationship experts, okay? So if you've ever felt like no one out there meets your relationship standards, or if you've ever questioned why the relationships you do attract don't last, I have something you're going to love. I'm thrilled to be a featured guest on an upcoming speaker series designed to help independent women attract and nurture equal healthy relationships. Hosted by my friend and colleague, Bex Burton. Lasting Love at Your Level features over 25 leaders in the evidence-based love and relationship space, including me. We're covering all kinds of topics, ranging from the benefits and setbacks of being an independent woman, the role the nervous system plays in love, attachment theory, dating and relationship skills, and more. This is a limited time online event that you won't want to miss. I want you to grab your spot today. You are going to use the link below You're going to use the link in the show notes, or if you're listening on YouTube, I put the link in the description box. It is www.bexburton.com slash lasting love at your level slash Anita. I look forward to seeing you there, but it is going to be amazing. So this week's podcast episode is being sponsored by Lasting Love at Your Level Speaker Series. I thank you so much in advance for signing up. So let's jump into this week's episode of the podcast. And it is all about a woman having the power to choose. Ladies, I have been working with a couple of ladies in the past month. And it has been very surprising to me to hear that they feel obligated. They feel obligated that if a man displays interest in them or if a man calls them or texts them or DMs them, you know, just shows interest in them, that they are somehow obligated to be with that man. And they spend a lot of time in uh, this mode where they are trying to impress him or help him to see how good they are. Mm -mm -mm. That is not what a feminine energy woman does. 
we stay with ourselves. We focus on ourselves. And every man that interacts with us, the number one thing we do is we determine how we feel about him. We don't worry about how he feels about us. That's, that's not something I even think about probably in the first three months. The first three months of interacting with a man, it's all about how do I feel about him? Is he a good fit for me? Are we compatible? Do we have a connection? Do we have chemistry with each other? You know, are we, do we have healthy communication? Do we have the ability to resolve conflict? Those are all the things that I'm vetting for really in the first three months. And I've often told women that three months is the minimum that you should wait before becoming exclusive and committed. I would not, if a man and I went out on a date, and let's say we had a fabulous date. Let's say that date lasted all day. And at the end of that date, he was like, yeah, I want to be your man, and I want you to be my lady. And I would not, I would not, I don't know you. You are still a stranger. Although we had a wonderful time, you are still a stranger. I don't have enough information to now cut off all of my other potential suitors to be with you. I do not know yet if you can meet the needs that I have. And that's where, that's the power I want you to sit in. That's where I want you to be in your power, that you are vetting and qualifying every man that comes across your path. And I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing women, you know, jump through hoops for a man, trying to impress a man you know, trying to, you know, show him what she brings to the table and that she's the one, that she's so great. That spirit is mired in wounds. There are wounds there from childhood, from other relationships. That's really what's happening. And I help these women that I was coaching, I help them to see that, that that's a wound that we have to work on healing because it's this, you know, choose me, choose me wound. You know, I, I, I want to be the best. I don't, you know, this fear of rejection and I have to prove my worth and value. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's a wound from your past and you need to work on that. You need to heal that wound because that is not what a powerful, feminine, sensual woman does. She knows who she is. She knows what she brings. She loves herself. She does not abandon herself. And so that would be, you know, in your attachment style, that would be in your childhood wounds. That's something that you'd really have to work on. This idea that just because a man comes to you, that you now have to prove yourself to him, that you even have to engage with him. So this is what a lot of, excuse me, this is what a lot of um, ladies have been telling me. They say, well, you know, this guy approached me or, you know, he uh, sent me a message in my DMs and, um, you know, I feel like I should give him a chance. I No, no, I don't know where that thinking comes from. So first of all, I need you to determine just based on the way he physically looks, you know, because that's all we got when we're dealing with a stranger who's sending us a message or someone who walks up on us. Um, you, you need to assess is this someone that you're physically attracted to. Are you physically attracted to this man? Is he an appropriate height, weight, looks? Like men are doing this. Men are doing this all day. They are determining based on our phys- physicality, you know, if they want to be with us or have sex with us or whatever. And so I want you to do the same thing. This is not someone that you find physically attractive. This is not someone that you deem appropriate for you just based on a physical level, just based and even based on a vibe. How about that? Let's go there. Let's base it on a vibe or an energy that we're getting. So that right there could disqualify him. He could be disqualified from that first, you know, falling in the DM or you go into his Instagram or Facebook page. There could be something on there just based on the way he looks or something that he's posting, just the vibe or the energy of what he's posting. Like he could be disqualified. He could be disqualified. So that's the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, you know, just my initial 
response, my initial, um, this initial interaction that I'm having with him? What's my first impression? Remember, your grandmother or grandfather might have said, first impressions matter. First impressions are important, and they are. And it's important that you make a good first impression too. But again, it's not about trying to win him over. It's not about trying to, you know, imp impress him in such a way that, oh, pick me, choose me. No, it's not like that. It's just showing up as the feminine woman that you are. That's, that's basically what I want you to focus on. Okay, but there's a wound there <clears throat> if you have this spirit of, I need to impress him. You know, I need to impress him. I, I'm I'm worried about what he thinks about me. Yeah, we gotta we gotta flip that around. The only thing you need to be wor or worried about or thinking about is how you feel about him. Okay, so try to determine that straight away. That is this somebody you would even be attracted to, and then you can move to the second or third level of that. So remember. We're always having a telephone call. We're not texting. We're not sending messages back and forth. We're trying to hear the person. We're trying to hear their spirit, how they, you know, the inflection in their voice. Um, we're trying to hear them kind of live and in person. So you want to talk on the telephone and, or FaceTime if you feel comfortable doing that. But you are in assessment mode. And that, it's so funny because so many men that have attempted to pursue me they can tell. They've actually said it. Oh, the first couple of months that we were getting to know each other, you were assessing me. You were sizing me up. You darn right. You darn right I was. I was not in my feelings. And they always say that. Oh, you're very rational. You're very logical. You were not, you know, starstruck by me or swept away. No, no, I was not. <laughs> because, you know, I've been doing this a long time, you know, and I've learned so much in all of these years. I've learned a lot. And I feel blessed that I'm able to finally apply the knowledge that I'm learning. So, no, there aren't, there are not a whole lot of men out there that make me starstruck. There's not a whole lot of men out there that make me, you know, get in my feelings right away. Like, I don't know you. That's the first thing I say to myself. If I walk up on a fine man or a fine man walks up on me and we're just interacting, I just repeat in my head, I don't know him. I don't know him. You know, he's a stranger. I don't know enough about him to be, you know, ready to throw my panties at him. I don't know him. And sometimes I need you all to do that too. You get so caught up in the fantasy in your head about a man that you don't know, that you, you know, project onto him. You project all these good qualities. Isn't that what they call the halo effect? You start putting all these good qualities on a good looking man, a tall man, a man who's successful, a man with a nice smile or whatever, a beard, whatever it is that you like, you start projecting all of these qualities on him. Oh, girl, that's my husband. No, he's not. No, he's not. I hate to bust your bubble, but he's not because you don't really know him. So you need to get to a place where you can, without a whole lot of emotion and fantasizing, you can simply assess. You can assess. You should be in assessment mode for the first three months. You are not going to be swept away by what he's buying, what he's spending, where he's taking you, how he looks, how he sounds, how he smells. You get so swept away. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You need to just assess. And I can appreciate a fine man. God knows I can. I can appreciate a fine man. Okay, I can appreciate a good smelling man. I can appreciate a clean shaven man because y'all know I don't like beards. I can appreciate, you know, a man with beautiful teeth. I can appreciate a man's beautiful hands, his deep voice, you know, his swag, his success. Oh, I can appreciate all of that. And yet that is not going to make me drop my guard, but so much because I don't know you. You're still a stranger to me. And so in three months, I might, you know, let the door to my heart open a little. But I've always told you all, you have to use your head. You have to use your rational mind first before you can let your heart out to play. That's how a lot of broken hearts happen, a lot of heartaches, a lot of disappointments. That's how it happens. We just fling the door to our heart open and let our heart run out and we get disappointed. We get hurt. So, yeah, I am asking you to go against uh, your nature a little bit here. 
and use your rational mind, especially if you've been in this situation over and over and you've been hurt over and over. See, now it's time to get smart. You must get smart. So here's another thing that these ladies told me. Well, you know, people keep saying like attracts like, and I keep attracting these no good guys. I keep attracting these liars, these cheaters, these feminine energy men, this and that. I'm attracting this. I'm attracting that. Okay. Well, yes, you know, we are all energetic beings and we are putting out a certain frequency based on our thoughts, our beliefs. We do tend to draw people to us that are in that same frequency or vibration as us. I get it. But here's the other thing I want to tell you about that. I also believe that we're going to attract all kinds of people in all kinds of frequencies for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes we'll attract low vibrational men as a test. That's a big part of it. We women, we read a few books, we listen to a few podcasts, we look at a ton of YouTube videos, and we're like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to do this. You know, I've got this feminine energy down. I've been really working on myself. I've gone to therapy, right? We, we get a little cocky there. And sometimes these low vibrational men come in, and it's a test. And you better pass that test, or you're going to find yourself right back where you started. Think about that. Is this a test? Is this fine man with no job and five kids, is he coming to test you? And guess what? You're going to have to pass that test. Oh, no, you got five kids. Mm -mm, I'm good. Oh, you're not working right now. Mm -mm, see, it wants to know how, how desperate are you really? You know, how lonely are you really? You ever think about that? Some of these low vibrational men are coming to test you. They're coming to see how lonely you really are, how desperate you really are, how long it's been since you've had a man smile at you, hug you, kiss you. Pass the test. I, after my divorce, I was by myself and abstinent for five long years. Five long years. And I was blessed in that I, the first man that really saw me, that really interacted with me and saw me, because I was around men. Oh my gosh, I was I was a tutor at VC. I was at tu a tutor at VCU for their uh basketball team. I was one of five VCU basketball team's tutors. And it don't get no finer than that in my book. Like tall basketball players, fine, young. <laughs> oh man. You talk about man and meeting with them every day, five days a week. But the truth is, none of those men could see me because I wasn't ready. I wasn't healed. I wasn't ready to move on. I wasn't in a good place. None of those men saw me. And it took five long years before a man could really see me. No man asked me out. No man came on to me, asked for my number. Nothing. People don't believe that, but it's the truth. I was being hidden for a reason because I was not ready. I was still bitter. I was still hurt. I was still angry. And men couldn't see me, but I was blessed in that the first man that really saw me after that, that five years, after that healing was a good man. He was a good man. We were a vibrational match. Like I had done my work. I had healed. He was also divorced. He was healed. He was in a good place, you know, and, and we were a good vibrational match. Now, he wanted to marry at that time, and I wasn't ready. I was not ready to jump into another marriage. I was like, nope, I like dating you. You're a nice man, you know, and he's a good guy, great guy. However, I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm not ready for that. And that relationship ended because he truly wanted to remarry. And he did. He did. Within a year of us breaking up, he found someone else and he married. So sometimes we're tested. Um, I would say the second man the second man after him was a test for me. He was a test for me. And honestly, if I could be so transparent, I kind of failed that test. Now, I felt, I felt good about the fact that that situation, that dating situation, it was about two months. It wasn't very long, but there were some things in there that I failed. You know, I can admit that. But it wasn't very long because, you know, I had done a lot of work. And at two months, I could recognize, oh, no, 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 this, nope, this is not it, you know. Um, and it was interesting because we were supposed to go away on a trip. 
And that's when the breakup happened. The weekend before we were supposed to go away on a trip, I was like, nah, this is not it. <laughs> I was like, this is not it. Come on. You, you've done too much work. You've done too much work for this. You've done too much work to fall for this. And I ended that dating relationship. And it really wasn't a relationship. We were just dating. Um, but yeah, that second one was a test. It was a test. So yes, ladies, these men are coming. And all kinds of men at all kinds of levels. And it is really up to you to do the work. Now, remember, a big part of doing the work is you have to be out there. That's how we're going to see. It's like taking a test. You have to be tested to, to see what you've learned. That's how we're going to gauge what you've learned and what you know. You've got to be out there. You've got to be in the trenches. You've got to be dating. You've got to be call, you know, letting a man call you, text you, and responding to those calls and texts. You have to go on dates. You have to use your skills in real time. And I don't see a lot of women doing that. And that's alarming to me because you're taking in all of this knowledge and you're going to sit back and you, you know, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel strong, but you're going to get cocky. And then when someone does cross your path that you that piques your interest, that you do have interest in, you could fail that test. So I, I'm just giving you my gentlest warning. You've got to use the skills. I use the skills even on my male friends. I have several men, several men that I have a healthy friendship with. And we're talking on the phone, we're texting, we're doing stuff here and there, they're coming over, you know, they're bringing their kids over and we're just hanging out or whatever. And I use my skills. That's an opportunity for me to use my skills, for me to become comfortable, for me to, um, one thing I see a lot with a lot of women, it's like masculine energy throws them off. Being around men throws them off. It makes them nervous. And oftentimes my coaching clients say, well, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say in the moment. Okay, that's telling me that you need practice. You need practice. You've got to practice these skills. Man, this stuff rolls off my tongue. This stuff is so deeply ingrained in me, it rolls off my tongue. This is who I am. This is not a front. This is not a game that I'm playing. This is who I am because I've done this over and over and over. And I'm asking you to do the same. You should know what to say. If a man gets out of pocket with you, if he asks you, oh, you know, can you want to come over to my house after the restaurant? Do you want to come for a nightcap? You should know what to say. You should know what to say to that. You should not find yourself in situations that you don't know how to get out of. No, you need practice. You've got to practice the skills. So you should know what to say. This is one, the, one of the things that my ladies are hearing, oh my gosh, these feminine energy men, these men in their feminine. Well, why don't you call me? Why don't you text me? Why don't you take me out? You should know what to say to that. That should not be a, a, oh, I just, I stutter over my words. I really don't know what to say. I really don't know how to respond. You should know how to respond. Because that's one of the, the most common things that my ladies hear when we're working together. And they want to know why I'm not doing this and why I'm not shooting shots. Man, <laughs> are you for real? No, I'm not doing that. That's a complete and utter turnoff for me. I am the girl the last I checked. <laughs> I am the woman. I have the parts to prove it. I mean, I've said this stuff so many times. And again, if a man don't like it, if he ain't with it, then that's not the man for me. I'm, lo I'm looking for masculine applicants only. That's just like when you go to look for a job and they say master's degree required, bachelor's degree required. So my, my ad says masculine energy required. <laughs> that's, what my, that's what my ad says for the applicant. No, don't even come over here if you are not in your masculine. I can't do nothing with you. I'm the girl. And, and ladies... I don't care if it's 2022. Shut this mess down. Oh, it's 2022. You on that? You on that old-fashioned, antiquated? Uh, yeah, because last I checked, no matter what year it is, I'm still the girl. I'm still a woman. Last I checked, you're still a man. You know, come on. Please don't fall for it. Please don't fall for it. But you have, this is a big part of doing the work, but also using the work. 
And you have to get confident and comfortable saying this on no given day. Mm-mm. Is, a, mm-mm. Is a man going to get me to roll reversal? That's never going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's not something I'm interested in. I'm interested in being the woman, the lady, the girl. I'm on my side of the fence and I need you to go back over there to your side of the fence. So, but ladies, we have to step in our feminine power. This is the feminine power. When I talk about feminine power, it is your power to choose. You are the gatekeeper. You determine if this is going to be anything. Now, here's what a lot of women are confused about, though. And I've had a couple of women reach out to me about this. Well, you keep saying we have all the power. You keep saying this feminine power. But, you know, I'm dating this man and it's been years and he won't marry me and he, you know, he won't propose or he won't or I'm dating this guy for months and he won't ask for me us to be exclusive. And, you know, he won't be, you know, he won't put a title on it. He won't be my man. So men, you know, we may be the gatekeeper for sex, but men are the gatekeeper for relationship. I I disagree. I disagree. And again, it's all where your head is at. See, a lot of women, that's when your switch gets flipped. When you're ready to be in a committed relationship or you're ready to get married, you you feel like you lose power. The switch gets flipped for you. <clears throat> now it's all about, well, he has the power there. And, you know, I, I don't. No, I always have the power. Last I checked, I have the power to leave. See, y'all don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. You have the power to leave a man alone. You have the power to walk away. You have the power to leave with your dignity. But see, that's what you don't want to hear. Oh, and I want this man. I want a particular man. You're so worried about the men that won't commit to you. You're so worried about the men that won't marry you. You can't see the 10 other men that want to be with you. Ladies, I'm going to say this one time. Please start focusing on the men that want you. Choose one of them. Choose a man that wants you that you also want. How about that? Because I'm not saying... For you to pick a man that wants you that you don't want. That's not what this episode is about. I want you to choose a man who wants you and you want him to. You want to get to know him. You want to give him a chance. You want to see what he's about. But please stop running after these men that are making it very clear. They don't want you. They don't want you like that. At the top of my need list. On the self-discovery relationship tool, at the top of that list, what's the number one thing? A man that wants and needs me. That's what I need. I need a man that wants and needs Anita. That's it. That's, That's what I need. That's at the top of that list. He must want and need me. I do not want a man that does not want me. I do not want a man that has lukewarm feelings towards me. Well, I mean, I, you know, Anita's okay. She's cool. I could take her or leave her. Nope. Nope. We good. We good. I need you to have that same energy. But a lot of this is you lose your power because you're going after men that don't want you. That's it. That's the bottom line. Instead of using that feminine power to attract a good, healthy, masculine man, a man that wants you a man that's willing to show that he wants you instead of using that power, right? And if ever, and I, and let me tell y'all something, I've used that feminine power even for men that did not want me. They wound up wanting me because of the power that I have. And, and even if let's say I pulled them in, but they still wouldn't commit, I always have the option to leave. And enough of you are not using that option. You're not using the option to let go to walk away. That's the that's the strongest card you have in the deck. Is leave him alone. He's confused, he don't know, he's not sure, bye. So, we got to get stronger. We have to tap into that feminine power that's deep down inside of you. There is no soulmate. There is no twin flame. There is no one man out there that you can be with. Mm-mm-mm. There are many men out there that you can be with. 
And you have to believe that. That has to be in your belief system, deep down in your spirit. I believe it because I have loved and been loved by 12 different men in my life across 54 years. So I know it's true. I could have married any of those men and been happy. Well, except one. That was my ex-husband. I, I did marry him and I was not, I was most definitely not happy, but I could have married any of those other men. So mm -mm, please don't fall for it. Please don't believe that, you know, there's just one man that I can be with or once you're dating this one man, oh, well, I've got to make this work. I've got to be with him. Not if he don't want you, you don't. Mm -mm, leave him in the dust. And okay, I get to leave with myself. I get to leave with my dignity and my self-respect and my self-love. I'm good. I'm good. That's, that's what I need you all to be on. That's the level of healing that you need to have, to, especially today. Especially today. It, it's, I've never seen anything like this. I have never seen anything like this. This is unprecedented in my 54 years of living I've never seen relationships between men and women this bad. Like, I, it, I, I don't even have words. I don't even have words to describe it. So ladies, we have got to put on our armor and not in a bad way. We've definitely got to put armor around our heart for a little while while we assess. You cannot let your heart out to play until your mind and your gut has approved that man. You've done your homework. You've done your background check. You've, you've become a detective. You've learned everything that you can know about this man. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. It's dangerous out here today. It's straight up dangerous. These men out here today, I mean, it's a wicked demonic spirit on some of these people out here, men and women. Please do your homework. Please. I cannot stress that enough. But yes, I need you to live and breathe in your feminine power. I know I do. I know I do. I know who I am as a woman. I know who I am as a feminine woman. I know what I bring to a man. I know all the love and care in my heart, all the nurturing, everything in my heart that, and everything in my spirit that I bring to a man's black and white world. I bring color to that world. And so the... The best fit man, the right masculine man for me, he will receive all of that. But I am not going to give that out to every man that crosses my path. I'm going to be feminine because that's the only state I know how to be in. But in terms of letting my heart out to play, no, not every man is going to experience that. They're going to experience the energy of me, but mm -mm. They're going to experience my playful nature, my smile. You know, there's so many things they will experience. But in terms of winning over my heart, no, you have to earn that. And, and getting my body, oh, no, you have to earn that. That's going to that's cost you the ring. So that's what I need you to be on. Okay, that's the level I want to see every woman on. I believe that if every woman can get to that level... The tide will turn. The tide will turn out here. If women started to walk in their femininity and their feminine energy and they honored themselves and they, they abided by no free wife, no free sex, this, ta this, th this tide would turn. But here's the reason why I believe we're not doing that because women don't have the patience. It would take time. And a lot of women don't have the patience. They don't have the patience to abstain. They don't have the patience to, to wait and see what the outcome of a decision like that would be. It's going to take time. Like, I know that. The men are not just going to in a month or two months or three months. They're just, oh, now I'm becoming more masculine. Now I'm going to, you know, start behaving more masculine and I'm going to start stepping up. I'm going to start, you know, asking for your hand in marriage. Like, it would take a year or more. For men to finally realize, oh, darn, they are not, you know, living with us. They're not having kids with us. They're not marrying us. They're not doing any of that unless we meet their terms. Yeah, that's it. Men would get a whole lot of dates. And that's about it, you know, but women, women are not patient enough. We can't stick together. 
That's a big part of our problem. But I want you to do your part. Wherever you are in the world, in your little space in the world, I want you to do your part. Be that woman of value. Be a high value, high quality woman. And pull in, attract, magnetize to you a good, healthy, high quality, masculine man. Okay, but do not settle for just anything. No, 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 no. Vet and qualify every man. You need to determine if he meets your standards and requirements. Do not keep interacting with him if he does not. Do not keep entertaining him. Ladies, there's, I'm talking to a bunch of monkey branchers out there. Well, some man is better than no man. I'll hold on to this man until the good man comes along. That's not how it works energetically. You will not attract that good man because your energy is going toward the not good man. Because you're so fearful and scared of being alone. That's just not how it works. You're going to be stuck in that low vibrational energetic state forever. Because sorry, boo, no good man is is coming. He's not attracted to you continuing to entertain these low vibrational men. Sorry. So no, you got to get stronger. And I believe it's in you. Deep down, I believe it's in you to cut off completely your ex or any man that does not meet your standard. Stop sleeping with him. Stop calling him. Stop texting him. I'm talking cold turkey. No contact. Because you are not my husband. I'm trying to magnetize my husband to me. I'm trying to attract my husband to me. That's what I'm on. And you're not him. And wasting good energy and time on these men that are not, leave them alone. Leave them alone. And be patient. I have to add that in there. Be patient. It's not like it was the moment you cut off the ex. You know, two weeks later, here comes your husband. No, you're going to have to be patient. There's some residual. There's some residual foolishness out there in the air that people can sense. Men Men can sense it. Be patient. Be patient. Okay? I hope this episode was helpful. Ladies, this is my last chance to convince you to check out Lasting Love at Your Level, featuring 25 leaders in the evidence-based love and relationship space, including myself. Um, We're covering all kinds of dating and relationship topics. You can grab your spot today at www.bbc.com. BexBurton.com slash lasting love at your level slash Anita. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me on this week's episode of the podcast. And as always, stay open to love. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Better Love Movement podcast. If you are not subscribed to the podcast, please do so now so that you can be alerted every Monday when a new episode comes out. Please rate and review this podcast as your ratings help me to grow the podcast and offer more free content to you. If you are watching this episode on YouTube, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up and share it if it brought you value. If you have a question that you would like to have answered on the show, please send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. You can also reach me on my website, www.betterlovemovement.com to get more information on love mentoring and other services offered. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, stay open to love. So you found the man who makes you feel unlike any other and you are dating him exclusively or you are in a committed relationship or marriage. Now what? The work is actually just beginning, ladies. It's how you now show up every day that will determine the health and happiness of your relationship. I wrote this book especially for women who desire to have the feminine skills necessary to get the best out of their man. Men are actually not that complicated. And if you are open to learning about them, you can have the relationship or marriage of your dreams. Get your copy of the brand new book, Do Well, A Feminine Woman's Guide to Relationship Success on Amazon today.